God said, let there be light. If you use simple physics, the whole of the world would have become vapour. Bang! So you stop people thinking. That is why the churches, the established churches, are against the fundamentalist evangelist church because the whole purpose is perverse. Thank you, Dr. Power. I've got a question. The statement that Darwin's philosophy uh, refers to a missing link uh, being still missing, uh, does that mean that it may not never be found or that it doesn't exist? Or does it exist but we just haven't found it? The fact that these missing links have not been found, well, we've been searching intensely for them for 125, 130 years after Darwin. Most geologists are now beginning to conclude we'll never will find them. And they're trying to invent some theory to get around that difficulty. Why? To explain why we have these huge gaps. Now, we're not going to find those things. We've searched every so-called geological formation, geological period around the Earth, the bottom of the ocean, everywhere else. And they've not turned up. And the conclusion is they're not going to turn up. Now, you can believe anything you want to, and obviously, a lot of people do believe a lot of different things. They're willing to believe anything to deny the possibility of creation. But go ahead and believe it. But it's just a belief. Acknowledge it. It's a religious belief. That's okay. I have no objection to that as long as we're honest about it. Yes, now that's the, that's the, the gentleman there with the glasses. He wants to ask a question. <laughs> Firstly, this is a question for Dr. Climber, I would like to ask you, what is it that uh, Isaac Newton, who defended Bishop Usher's chronology of biblical, um, cr uh, uh, how the world came to be, you know, conservative, <laughs> conservative chronology of the beginnings of this universe, Isaac Newton was a Christian. What is it then that um, Michael Faraday, who gave us the laws of uh, electromagnetism was a Christian who who was a creationist. Well, what's the question? The question is. <laughs> That's not a question. That's not a question. <laughs> why is it then, Mr. Climber, and I would like to graciously, why is it that evolution, evolutionists are not adding to the field of knowledge rather than taking away from them? Since Isaac Newton, Galileo, and any scientist of the past that you would like to mention, since then there have been thousands of scientific discoveries. I gave you the figure for scientific manuscripts submitted over a four year period. 135,000. You want science not to have advanced. That's why you think like you do. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Gish. Um, I take it he believes in a creationism of a particular religion. Now, I believe that the world is full of uh, many religions, um, many of whom have their own creation theories. I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Dr. Gish what um, particular creation theory he believes in and has he done a comparative study of them and if he has chosen a particular one why has he chosen that particular one over the others the answer to that question is very simple we want none of these taught in the public school we don't want the book of genesis we don't want the navajo indian version we don't want the hindu version we don't want any of these taught. what we want is the kind of scientific evidence that i present here tonight if you are a believing Muslim, if you are a believing Muslim, an Orthodox Jew, if you are a Christian, if you are a Hindu, no matter what, then the theistic creation model comes within your, your area and it can fit and support any kind. I personally accept the Judeo-Christian view. I believe it is a correct one. That's what I accept. And I, that is on the basis of my faith, just as an atheist has faith, just as an agnostic has faith, just as anyone has faith, and don't kid yourself. Now, Dr. Clymer put his 
finger on it, he started to lambast the fundamentalists. Why don't fundamentalist Christians have some rights? Why can't their viewpoints be heard? Why can't the fundamentalist Catholics, the fundamentalist Presbyterians, the fundamentalist Baptists, why don't we have any rights? Why is it only the liberal and the agnostic and the atheist? Right now in the United States, what they say is this, you have a thousand kids in a school and if there's one atheist, you can't teach anything that would even hint at the existence of God, you've got to bow down before that one atheist. Now what's democratic about that? What, what's right about that? Why can't we teach both? Why can't both these kids hear both sides of this question? What's wrong with that? I'd like to know what's wrong with it.
Tom Kim. Let me address this problem about the, the mammal-like reptile. Now, here's another thing. You see, what people want to do is try to drag us into an argument about, uh, about this. All right, now let's be fair about this. I pointed out, I pointed out the immense gap where there is no argument, where there is no discussion, where these invertebrates do all appear fully formed, and there's no question that they do. And there's a hundreds and hundreds of millions of years gap there. There's a hundred million year gap between the invertebrates and the vertebrates, and no ichthyologist who knows anything about it would claim that it has any ancestors, for, any ancestors for fishes, none whatsoever. You're talking about something found in the middle Cambrian. And it's not an intermediate between anything. Is it soft-bodied? It's soft-bodied. All right, what is it evolving into? Is it 